Hey, my beautiful friends. Thanks for tuning in. So today I'm going to do a science class with Mystery Science. I had just posted a uh, curriculum review for you guys, and I promised that I would show you how it works, just in case um, you were wondering. So um, I'm going to give you a quick title of the class we're doing today. We are doing How Do Flowers Bloom in Spring? And so I went through the activities. I'll show you in a minute. I went through uh, the activity supplies to make sure I had everything ready. And I also got the printouts out. So these are part of the printouts right here. And then I'm going to call my boys in. They're waiting to start. And we're going to do this uh, class and show you how it works. So stay tuned. All right, so the boys are here. Say hello. Hello. I gave something for JJ to do while we are listening to the class. So here we go. This is the title. It says, How Do Flowers Bloom in Spring? So let me show you there. It says exploration is five minutes and activity is about 25 minutes. So let's go. You hit start mystery. Press that. <laughs> and then full screen. So this was a question. Watch this. Hi, it's Doug. Flowers are known for being pretty, but when I think about them, I also like to think about the extremes. Like, what are the biggest flowers in the world? Well, one of them is this. It's called the Rafflesia flower, and it's found in Southeast Asia. You can see it's absolutely <coughs> huge. Someone named Yahya has another question about flowers. Let's give him a call now. What a cute name. Hi, Doug. Hi, Yahya. I have a question for you. How do flowers bloom in the spring? That is a great question. So cute. In early springtime, you might have noticed green leaves or stems start growing little by little each day. But the amazing thing about flowers is that it's like one day, poof, almost like magic. It's not just leaves and a stem anymore. But a flower pops wow. open on top. That looks awesome. Mm. And notice, it's not just small plants either. Many trees have flowers that bloom in springtime too. Like the tree How do plants do this? I oh, think one thing that makes cool. this question especially interesting so is that plants aren't exactly famous for moving yeah. or doing anything exciting that catches oh. our attention no, the way animals do. Yeah. I mean, animals yeah. have muscles. And muscles are what enable animals to move around all over the place. In fact, we even use part of the word animal in words like animate or animation, words that involve movement. But plants really do move, as you can see when you watch them in a sped up video. They not only open up their flower petals, they twist and reach for the sun. They do, remember? Some plants about? even capture bugs oh. like this Venus flytrap. And yet, unlike animals, plants have no oh, muscles. My first if plants don't have muscles, Me then too, how do they move? <laughs> how do plants do things like make flowers pop open in springtime? All right, we have a discussion question. How do you think plants move? Um, by wind. Okay, the wind, that's a good thought. What else? But we'll find out. They have something in them that yes. makes them move, like because they are alive. Yeah, they're they, alive, they right? Die. They have life. They, yeah, they, they, they die and they live. They 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 have these things that uh, are bones, but they're not like hard, right? There's no bones in plants. They're not like people. They don't have bones. They have a stem, mm -hmm. right? That long. And and the, does um um. But how do they move, though? A whoop, but oh. Bye. As they're growing, they move as they're growing, right? Because they gotta grow. Mm -hmm. So at least you know they grow, when they're growing, they move. Mm -hmm. How do they open up? How do they grow though? Oh, well, no, you know how plant, yeah, you know how <laughs> no, flowers grow. I mean. <laughs> you know how they grow. So let's keep looking. One important clue is to notice what else is happening in springtime when most flowers bloom. Springtime might make you think of sunlight and warmth, and plants do need sunlight. But there's something else that happens with the weather in spring, and that's this. Lots of rain. Rain. There we go. It's usually rain. after springtime rains that we see so many flowers start blooming. You probably know that plants soak up water from their roots. Like all living things, plants need that water to live and grow. Mm -hmm. But 
Could it be that plants also use water in order to move? It's maybe a little weird to think of water as something that can cause movement. But forget plants for a minute. Think of a familiar situation like this. When this paper towel gets dipped into a cup of water, notice how the water moves up the paper towel. Mm -hmm. Or in this video, someone has put food coloring in water. And just by dipping a paper towel in each cup, the water slowly moves from cup to cup. Water has some surprising properties. It can move up surfaces like a paper towel. We learned about or that. as you might have seen if you've ever played with little toy no, sponge no. capsules like these. Water even has the power to make certain things expand or swell. Oh, but those are one way to see for yourself no, no. the power of water in plants is to notice what happens when you water a plant that's been really dry. In this sped up video, you can see how the plant stems were drooping down. But after the plant gets watered, wow. the stems stand up straight again. So mm -hmm. even though plants don't have muscles, plants can soak up water from the ground, then use some of these surprising properties of water to make some of their parts move. That's all for this week's question. Thanks, Yahya, for asking it. Now, after this video is done playing, my friends and I here at Mystery Science have created a step-by-step -step activity where you can explore one of these surprising properties of water and really see for yourself how this works. I hope you'll try it. Have fun and stay curious. Yay. All right, so Jonah, it was in the wind, right, Jonah? Aww. It was the water. It was the water that went what? up the root. I, but that's like, I, I, I kind of won because that I said there was something like in them that makes them move, uh -huh. which is water. Water, yeah. Okay, so our, we're going to do the activity, and this is a perfect activity for Mother's Day. Um, so that's why I thought it was perfect to do the class now, right before Mother's Day, to show you guys what a cute activity. So I'm going to give the boys a printout. We're going to see the activity instructions, and uh, yeah, let's get to it. So they give you two different ages to print. There's a lower grades and upper grades. I printed one for Jonah for the lower grades and one for Jail for the upper grades. It just has a little bit more writing in it. And then it's going to show them how to fold the cards step by step and they have to follow the directions. For Gigi, he's gonna call you. Want to use your crayons? Okay. All right. okay Before you, you make your flower, decide who you'll give your card to. Write their name at the top of your card, and remember to sign your name at the bottom. Cute. You'll put your flower here later. <coughs> For now, color in the leaves and stem. Yes. Perfect. I'll set a timer in case that's helpful. That is not and helpful. I do. <laughs> the timer stresses Jay all out because it's so slow. <laughs> But it's okay, we'll just keep it in the camera. All right, now let's color and let's um, label our cards, okay? Okay, so now each of them have to just cut one card out of their sheets so they can uh, focus on doing one card at a time and then they can do the rest of the cards later. So we're gonna show you how it works. Celebrating because little guy over here is cutting straight lines. Uh -uh. <laughs> Alright, almost done cutting. So the next step is for the kids to color their flowers and they give them some examples on the right there as you see. And then one of the things that I wanted to highlight is that um, they put a timer on the top, but it's just to give a, the kids like an idea of how long it would you know, truly take it, they were focusing. Um, so, and I also want to say that um, the materials called for crayons, and JL wanted to do use markers, but I told JL that um, the markers might not work. I'm not sure if they would, but we will definitely do markers on a different flower to see if it would work the same. But we kept the crayons for the same reason. Now you're going to fold your flower in half along the thick black line. 
Here's how I suggest you do that. Place your flower face down on your desk, like this. Then line up the corners, like this. And press down in the middle to fold it. Hold on, Sam. Now when you do that, use your fingernail to make a good crease. We're gonna fold your flower a few more times, and this will make cutting easier later on. The next two steps are a little tricky, so I suggest Watch what to do first, and then, <coughs> and then follow along. Okay. Got it. I missed the step, but you bring the top down, and then it forms this right here and then it tells them to cut it uh, through the dotted lines. I love that the idea behind the folding is so they could cut the entire flower all at once. There we go, JJ. Show me your flower. Yay. Good job. That's the flower. Good job. And then the next thing is they have to prepare their flowers to bloom. And the boys wanted to keep the pretty flowers for their cards. So they made another set of flowers. And then we're going to show you the water experiment. We're all gonna put our flowers in. Are you guys ready? Yep. All right, drop them in, everybody together. Oh! <laughs> oh a book. They're blooming. Oh! <laughs> you like that? Oh! <laughs> it's so funny. Yeah. They're so pretty. That Good job, awesome. guys. And the last step is for the older grades. It just tells them to write their answers on the back of the paper to show the instructions to the person they're giving the um, card to. The kids truly love the activity. They had so much fun. The last thing they show is also like an extra um, experiment activity. They can use different paper to see if it works the same. So that's pretty much it, you guys. That's how a class goes. The boys love each class so much because it's so clever how they use paper, right, to do these projects. So um, I would just want to say that I'm not sponsored. I don't have any affiliate links. I just truly enjoy this um, website so much, and so do my boys. And I wanted to share with some mamas because um, maybe it. your kids would love it too. Yeah, they love it. So uh, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Something. Uh, yeah, so the first video of Mystery Science, I was just like, that was the best thing of my life. And I was like, <laughs> it was the awesome. You were hooked. Yeah, uh huh. Yeah, and it was awesome. Like, That's so cute. I forgot, it, I forgot it, but I know I loved it. Yes. Uh, yeah, uh huh. So I'm, I'm going to give this to somebody and uh, hope, uh, thank you for watching and uh, give us a big thumbs up. Thank you. Good job.